Fear of customs fails big time in our government's fight against graft and corruption. The facts are telling. As per the social weather station, the BOC had consistently topped their polls as the most corrupt government agency from 2005 to 2016. Here's the problem. Periodically, the headlines shout of yet another big tale of corruption at the Bureau, but the anger and indignation are not sustained. This corruption mess is deliberately downplayed by the customs cretins and consigned to the dustbin of journalism history, ably assisted by their cohorts of PR firms, always ready and able to summarily kill a story that puts the Bureau in a bad light. How many of you still remember the case six years ago of a customs clerk named Paulino Elevado, who was discovered by accident, literally, to be the owner of a pricey Porsche Carrera sports car? Aside from his Porsche, this Elevado also owned a fleet of six other luxury cars, two houses in an upscale subdivision. His salary, 9,000 pesos a month. Clerk pa lang yan, hindi pa bossing. It is time to bring the intensity of the war against drugs to the war against corruption. Ramdam na ramdam ang war against drugs. Araw-araw, ang daming napapatay. Pero, ang war against corruption, bakit wala na yata tayong naririnig na nakukulong? I have always believed that in the fight against corruption, we should always have one single standard. More importantly, we should not attempt to find who our allies, friends, or enemies are. Regardless of anything or anybody, corruption is evil. And there can never be, or there can be, there should be no compromise with evil. For over a decade, the Bureau of Customs failed to show improvement in fighting corruption. The most recent scandal, however, closely impacts the administration's war on drugs, the very centerpiece of President Duterte's campaign promises. In fact, drugs and corruption are the two issues that President Duterte emphasizes in his public speeches and media interviews as tops in his list of priorities. <clears throat> this makes the issue at hand more wanting and controversial than the same old stories of customs improprieties. Last Sunday, President Duterte has announced the appointment of PIDEA Director General Isidro, Isidro La Peña to replace Bureau of Customs Chief Nicanor Faildon in the wake of the 6.05 billion peso shabu shipment from China. Mr. President, I pondered that delivering this privileged speech today must be, might be likened to beating a dead horse. However, Mr. President, I have come to realize that when it comes to national interest, you do not deal with just one horse. Instead, you decimate the entire stud. <clears throat> Nearly three months ago, media headline story of the seizure of local authorities by local authorities of 604 kilograms of methamphetamine hydrochloride in a brokerage warehouse in Valenzuela City. The latest drug haul is estimated to have a retail value of 6.05 billion pesos. Initial reports indicated that the successful apprehension of a big haul of illegal drugs was a product of intelligence sharing and cooperation ag against cross-border smuggling between China and the Philippines Customs Authorities. However, Mr. President, you do not need a title nor a law degree to postulate that something was terribly wrong. <clears throat> the story as it unfolds sounds more like the inspiration behind the hit movie title, Kita Kita. First, Kitang kita natin because it was so obvious that the enormous shipment was successfully smuggled under the noses or through the indispensable participation of customs officials. Second, the huge amount involved showed the obvious. Kita ang kita. We can see the peso signs in billions. This exactly is what prompted the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee led by Senator Dick Gordon in aid of legislation to conduct an inquiry in what looked like the fast and furious smuggling of 604 kilos of shabu contradicting the government's intensified war against drugs. 
During four public hearings, we have uncovered the identities of key personalities and their modus operandi. Kita ang kita. We can easily see the incomes of several customs officials, a self-confessed player, a.k.a. fixer, Mark Taguba, confessed about some payoffs. First, in an executive session, eventually in open public hearings. Yesterday, he presented few names at the customs officers of the customs officers and bad men whom he had transactions with. However, Taguba did not spill all the beans. Kitang kita natin. We discovered the labyrinth and lexicon of the criminal inside the Bureau of Customs. The consignee for hire, the selective lane mechanism, the payola system, the partner in crime relationship between Chinese nationals and our corrupt government officials, complete with middlemen and bad men. It is a smuggling mafia out there, Mr. President, a criminal state that has no fear of government nor the president. Kawawa ang Republika ng Pilipinas. Suffice to say, Mr. President, that our quest to dig up how 604 kilos of shabu neatly hidden in five cylindrical roller printing machines from China managed to slip under the BOC officials' noses has opened up a whole cylinder of worms. During the hearing of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, Commissioner Don admitted that he was aware of the so-called PARA system even before assuming office. He said he tried. His excuse? He could not investigate the matter because he was helplessly, helplessly alone in eradicating corruption in his domain. To be more specific, Feldon said, and I quote, the appointment of the officers in charge in the probe was just December or January, so for the first six months, I was working alone. Boo-hoo! Tell that to the Marines, Mr. Pildon, but not to this institution. Mr. President, records show that as early as July 1, 2016, he already hired the services of Gerardo O. Gambala, Milo D. Masrecampo, Attorney Mandy Therese M. Anderson, and Henry Anthony M. Torres as technical assistants. It's receiving a monthly compensation of 40,000 pesos to 50,000 pesos. Kitang kita, the lies. Mr. President, even granting, that, even granting Mr. Pildon's assertion that he was working alone, if he was the principled man that he said he is, he should have stood firm even if he was alone. As head of the Bureau, with the backing of no less than the President of the, of the Republic of the Philippines, Commissioner Pildon should have started the cleansing in the Bureau by eliminating what has been corrupting the agency for so long, the Tara system. Unfortunately, instead of going against the system, siya ang kinain ng sistema, thereby effectively tolerating and even promoting the impunity of corruption. Loud whispers in the four corners of the Bureau of Customs compound tell of a 100 million peso pasalubong to the newly installed, installed commissioner a quarter of which, or 25 million pesos, was retained by, as finder's fee by his middleman named Joel Tevez. If in the AFP under a previous administration, you end your stint with the infamous goodbye, Pabaon, the Bureau of Customs, the man, you start your stint with a welcome, Pasalubong. Holy mackerel, Welcome palang, may kita na. It is an outright cash incentive, Mr. President. Accepting this pasalubong is a slippery slope. As they say, corruption is, is like a, a ball of snow. Once it has set a rolling, it must increase. Once one accepts the pasalubong, then the ball of corruption starts to snowball. At pag nasarapan ka, Hahanapanapin pa ang dagdag kita. And just like taking illegal drugs, they find themselves addicted to bribes in exchange for favors. Tuloy ang ligaya ng mga corrupt. Indeed, loose morals will blur lines. How can we stop the importation of illegal drugs at the Bureau of Customs if the drug activities of its officials and personnel and the corrupt system persist in the seaports and airports? 
the issue at hand would have never happened if there was no collusion by someone with somebody from the inside, whether it is a middle-level official of the Bureau or all the way up. Kung walang kita, lahat makikita. Kung may kita, eh, wala talagang pagpupuslit na makikita. Mr. President, everybody knows at the Bureau of Customs, it's everybody happy. They have the so-called payday, Friday, TGIF, Friday 3 o'clock habit, or whatever day of the week and hour of the day they now choose to make themselves happy and, yes, filthy rich. So many monikers have been coined for this joyous tradition at the Bureau of Customs, but all refer to a weekly assembly of several customs officials and selected employees where multi-million peso bribes, otherwise known as TARA, are given up and divided up. Are given and divided up. Mr. President, for the past few weeks, I have been expressing my disbelief with President Duterte's unusual calm and gentle reaction to the alleged involvement of his people in customs to the massive volume of drugs that easily made its way to our controlled borders. Nevertheless, after weeks of public outcry here, there, and everywhere, for the removal of Pildon, President Duterte has finally acted and replaced him as customs chief, even for an quote unquote honest man. Sabi nga natin, it is better late than never. Now, in case our distinguished colleagues are wondering how and from I got all this information, let me tell you as a background. Mr. President, with a little bit of exaggeration, sinik pa don na lang yata ang hindi nakapag-ambag ng datos na ipapakita ko sa inyo sa mga susunod na sandali. Indeed, when the so-called Customs Payola or Tara hit the fan and made it to the headlines, information came pouring in. Quite a number of top and middle-level customs officials and employees, as well as brokers, even a civic-minded individual who has been gathering information on this matter for the longest time started contacting our office. At least two of those I mentioned directly came to us to provide their own versions of the Tara list. From various sources inside and outside the Customs Bureau that I had interacted with over the past two weeks regarding the Tara list, we carefully vetted and cross-matched each and every information to come up with an objectively filtered and detailed list of who and how much each office or official in the Bureau collects per container per day. From the list furnished us by various sources, a standard TARA amounting to a low of 19,000 to a high of 45,000 is paid to the customs officials in the central office for each container. On top of the standard TARA paid to Customs Central Office, Manila International Container Port, or MICP, officials and employees also collect payola in the amount of 14,700 pesos on the low side and 23,700 pesos on the high side for 40 footer containers. Hence, the total TARA being paid for each container is from 33,700 pesos to 68,700 pesos. For a 40-footer container in the Port of Manila, or POM, the tara of the customs officials and employees amounts to 15,700 pesos to 26,700 pesos. If we add this to the standard tara in the central office mentioned above, the total tara ranges from 30, 34,700 pesos to 71,700 pesos. For a 20-footer container, an additional 12,200 to 20,700 tara for the customs officials and employees in the Manila International Container Port is added to their standard tara, making a total tara for its 20-footer container amounting to 31,200 pesos to 65,700 pesos. For the Port of Manila, customs officials and employees are receiving taras from a low of 13,200 to as high as 23,700, making the total tara for a 20-footer ranging from a low of 32,200 to a high of 68,700. From this, 
the share of its office or person within the bureau can range from a low of 200 to a high of 15,000 per container. Believe it or not, Mr. President, officials from the top offices of the bureau down to those who monitor the gates and x-rays have their share in the Tara. What is amusing, Mr. President, ang mga dokumento at listahan ng mga tumatanggap ng Tara ay naglalaman ng halos pare-parehong mga pangalan ng customs officials and offices involved, bagmen at operators, maliban sa mga pangalan at siyempre naman ng mismong nagbahagi ng informasyon sa amin. Having said that, it is almost an easy job to come up with a very credible Tara list. So, without much ado, allow me to proceed. Mr. President, I beg your indulgence as I have a lot of names to read from this list. Allow me to start with the list of alleged bribe givers or players at the Bureau of Customs. Tina Yu, Jerry Yu, Manny Santos, David Tan, Jude Lugarta, Eric Yap, Edvik Yap, Ruben Taguba and Mark Taguba, Noel Bonvalin, John Paul Tevez, Jerry Tevez, Joel Tevez, Jan Jan Tevez, Ringo Tevez, George Tan, Johannes Dennis Derama, Harry Tan or Henry Tan, Bim Castillo, George Wee, Attorney Venir Bakiran, Johnny C, Armando Burog Tolentino and Ruel Tolentino, Kimberly Gamboa, Bobot Sison, Marty Pimentel, a certain Eunice of Davao, Jun Diamante, Vic Reyes, Jerry Yap, Arnold Saulong, Hope Arnulfo Saulong, Boy Sabater, Nero Andal, Leah Cruz, Aying Acosar, and Eduardo Dio, Ray Tubig, Ruel C, Frank Wong, Chi Men, Jen Yu, Grace Bisaya, Arthur Tan, Charlie Tan of Davao Group, Anthony, Anthony Nang. At this point, here are the names of identified collectors and bagmen. Attorney Christopher Bolastig to Russell and Australia and Attorney Genefiel Lagmai for the Office of the Commissioner or OCOM. Naniko for Import and Assessment Service, IAS, also included, is a certain Lorna Rosario. Joel Pinawin, Oli Valiente and Teddy Sagaral for Customs Intelligence and Investigation Service or CIIS. Attorney Larry Bert Hilario for the Risk Management Office, RMO, and Command Center, or COMSEN. A certain Magic, or Major Salamanca for Enforcement Group. Bien Rubio, Jerry and Diego Santiago for the Intelligence Group. Jasmine Obillos for Revenue Collection Monitoring Group, or RCMG. Sia Otto and Roy for Assessment and Operations Coordinating Group. Bien Rubio, again for Intellect Intellectual Property Rights Division, Attorney Tom Tagra for Legal Service, Boy Garcia for Accounts Management Office or AMO, Certain Mamadra, Bobadilla, and Mamao for Cosms Collector in Naia, a Certain Honk for the Cosms Collector in Subic, Efren Ambagan, and a Certain Giao for the Cosms Collector in Clark, Alfred and Daniel Wagwag for the District Collector, Port of Manila. June Rapa for the De Deputy Collector for Operations for Port of Manila. Attorney Alex, Attorney Mimi Aldabe, and Attorney Benil Bakiran for the District Collector, Manila International Container Port. Jason Kalinap for X-ray in MICP. Agama and Junjun Reyes for X-ray at Port of Manila. For the Enforcement and Security Service, ESS, for the Manila International Container Port, or Dunya and Bundukin, with a certain ante as runner, and Lino Arroyo for the Enforcement and Security Service, Port of Manila. Meanwhile, <clears throat> here's a brief summary of the amounts being regularly distributed in the Payola system. Please note that these amounts are given per container. For Bureau of Customs Central Office, the following are the standard tara for its office or division. 5,000 pesos to 10,000 pesos for the office of the commissioner. 5,000 pesos to 10,000 pesos for the command center or comsen. 1,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the assessment 
Operations Coordinating Group or AOCG, 1,500 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the Intelligence Group or IG, 3,000 pesos to 10,000 pesos for CIIS Central, 500 pesos to 1,000 pesos for CIIS Director's Office, 1,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the Intellectual Property Rights Division or IPRD, 1,000 pesos to 2,000 pesos for the Accounts Management Office or AMO, 1,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the Import and Assessment Service or IAS, for the Manila International Container Port and Port of Manila, 9,000 pesos to 15,000 pesos for the section heads, appraisers, and examiners in the formal entry division for both MICP and POM. 1,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the informal entry division for both MICP and Port of Manila. 3,000 pesos each for the MICP and the Port of Manila Collector's Office. 500 pesos to 1,000 pesos for the CIIS Port for both MI MICP and POM. 500 pesos for enforcement and security service for both MICP and POM. 500 pesos to 1,000 pesos for both MICP and POM. 200 pesos for the peers and inspection division for both MICP and POM. 1,000 pesos to 3,000 pesos for the deputy district collector of the Port of Manila. Official records from the Bureau of Customs disclose that on the average, around 15,000 to 16,000 containers are transacted for release every week at the Manila International Container Port and the Port of Manila. Of this, between 6,000 to 6,400 are approximately or approximately 40% of the total weekly containers have TARA. Mr. President, meron po tayong tinatawag na mga big players. Sila ang mga halos nagahari o namamayagpag sa pagpapalabas ng mga kargamento sa customs. A total of 390 to 490 containers per day or 1,950 to 2,450 containers weekly are being facilitated by the so-called big players broken down as follows. 100 to 110 containers care of David Tan, David Tan. 800 to 100 containers Davao Group, Taguba belongs to this group. 800 to 100 containers care of Mani Santos. 800 or 80 to 100 containers by the Tevez Group. 50 to 80 containers by Kimberly Gamboa. Finally, Mr. President, here are the recipients of the Tara Payola or Payola at the Bureau of Customs. Commissioner Nicanor Paeldon. Deputy Commissioner Teddy Rabal of the Intelligence Group. Deputy Commissioner Ariel Nepomuceno, Enforcement Group. Deputy Commissioner Gerardo Gambala of the Command Center. Deputy Commissioner Natalio C. Ekarma III of the Revenue Collection Monitoring Group or RCMG. Deputy Commissioner Edward James D. Buco of the Assessment and Operations Coordination Group or AOCG. Director Neil Estrella, Customs Intelligence and Investigation Service. He is alleged to collect also for the Office of the Commissioner, together with Chris Bolastig. Attorney Zay de Guzman, Chief Intellectual Property Rights Division. Attorney Larry Bert Hilario of Risk Management Office. Joel Pinawin, OIC Chief Intelligence Division of the BOC, also one of the alleged collectors of Director Estrella. Director Milo Mastrecampo, Import and Assessment Service, IAS. Attorney Grace Malabed, Acting Chief of the Account Management Office or AMO. Attorney Alvin H. Ebreo, Director Legal Service under Revenue Collection Monitoring Group or RCMG. All section heads, appraisers and examiners in the formal entry division in both the Manila International Container Port and the Port of Manila. Athena Dance of the Informal Entry Division MICP. All section heads appraisers and examiners in the informal entry division in the Port of Manila. MICP and POM, Sections 1, 9, 10, and 15, Chief Appraiser and Examiner. 
for the district collectors and officers, the following names were mentioned. Collector Jet Moranilla of the MICP, Collector Rhea Gregorio of the POM, Collector Edgar Macabeo of Naiya, Collector Arbira Cruz of Cebu, Collector Marites Martin of Clark, Collector Mimel Mar uh, Talusan of Subic, Collector Reynaldo Galeno of Batangas, Deputy Collector Mel Pascual for the Port of Manila. One is already deceased, Captain Ticoy Gutierrez of Enforcement and Security Service, MICP. He was replaced by a certain Orduña. Mr. President, an unimpeachable source provide me, provided me with information involving a prominent customs official listed above. For the period covering May 16 to June 28, 2017, Mr. Customs Officials' total encashment amounted to 5,109,000 pesos with the following breakdown. 1.5 million peso, million, uh, million peso check deposit on check deposit on May 16, 2017. 1.2 million pesos check encashment on June 1, 2017. 699,000 pesos encashment on June 5, 2017. 1 million pesos encashment on June 8, 2017. 910,000 pesos encashment on June 19, 2017. 1.3 million pesos encashment on June 28, 2017. The Tara system, Mr. President, shows that there is a systemic corruption in the Bureau. In fact, for almost every office and official receiving their share of Tara, the Bureau can give the Mafia stiff competition. Mr. President, the Supreme Court in the ruling said we cannot afford to fail either in combating the drug menace or in protecting the individual rights and liberties we have enshrined in our Constitution. Either way, the consequences of continued failure are hard to imagine." Unquote. The drug problem cannot be solved by focusing on the demand reduction alone or effort alone. Hindi pa ba sapat ang isang taon at libo-libong napatay ng mga polis at vigilantes para makita at mapatunayan natin ito. Since my days in law enforcement, Mr. President, we have always embarked on a two-pronged strategy in combating illegal drugs, demand or market constriction, and supply reduction. True, hunting down big time as well as small time pushers and drug addicts in the streets may suppress the drugs market. But if our frontline government agency called the Bureau of Customs would allow, consciously or otherwise, the convenient smuggling of tons of shabu into our country, it is impossible to win the battle against illegal drugs simply because the supply reduction side of the anti drugs strategy is failing miserably. Parang gripo, patuloy ang daloy ng illegal drug sa bayan, toneladang illegal na droga. This runs counter to the policy adopted by the state as enunciated in Section 101, Republic Act 10863, otherwise known as the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act, to wit, it is the policy of the state to protect and enhance government revenues institute fair and transparent customs and tariff management that will efficiently facilitate international trade, prevent and curtail any form of customs, fraud, and illegal acts, and modernize customs and tariff administration. This policy is in recognition of the important role that the Bureau of Customs plays in being the first line of defense against the threats that arise from international trade. The problems that our country is facing now such as smuggling, fraud, and drug trafficking, can effectively be lessened if we only fortify our first line of defense on border management. Thus, it is incumbent upon us to address this Bureau of Customs issue head on and at its core. There is a saying that every time we need to solve problems, we should dig at the roots instead of just hacking at the leaves. If we intend to remain committed to the war on drugs, we need a war on corruption. Mr. President, I have known the newly appointed Customs Chief, General Sid La Peña, as an honorable man. In fact, I can personally vouch for his integrity. 
with his appointment as the new customs chief, I can only hope and pray na hindi siya kainin ng sistema tulad ng nauna sa kanya. His highest calling at the moment is to descend to the gates of hell and destroy the brazen corruption within the country's most corrupt government agency. General La Peña needs to institutionalize genuine reforms and by genuine reforms, that would mean the abolition of the corruption system from top officials down to the last rank and file in the Customs Bureau. Mr. President, I believe nothing will happen if you do not address the moral bankruptcy that is intrinsic among the officials and members of the Bureau of Customs. We should not turn our heads too far from the deeper issue that holds back the progress of our nation. Henceforth, it is also high time to send off an all-out sustained war against corruption. And the battle starts at the Bureau of Customs. I firmly believe then and now that it is the only way we can build a better, more progressive future for this country. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Laxon. For President, may we recognize Senator Bama Aquino? Sen uh, Senator Aquino is recognized. Uh, Senator Laxon will uh, agree to be uh, thank you, our Majority Floor Leader. Una -una po sa lahat, let me commend the good gentleman for his report. Uh, maraming salamat, Senator Laxon. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat din po, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Uh, Senator Laxon, would you be amenable? Mr. President, would you be amenable to a few questions? Yes, of course. Uh, my pleasure. My privilege. Uh, Mr. President, ito pong nailabas niyo pong data. Marami pong mga nag bigay po sa inyo ng datos na yan, no? And we had been talking previously that you had cross-referenced uh, a lot of the data before you gave your privilege speech. Yes, uh, that is correct, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Mr. President, yung mga lumalabas pong mga paratang ni Mark Taguba dun sa ating uh, Blue Ribbon Committee hearings, does it coincide with the data that you have received? Mukha po, mukha po bang nagsasilita ng totoo, nagsasabi po ng totoo, o mali-mali po yung mga binibigay po niyang mga pangalan at mga datos doon sa komite? Yung uh, testimonya ni Mark Taguba, ang una naming uh, natanggap na dokumento, at tama po, tumatama iyon sa mga iba pang mga listahan at dokumento na nakarating sa aming opisina, dangan nga lang at kulang yung kay Mark Taguba. Hindi po nahagip yung ibang mga information na nakapaloob dito sa ating privilege speech. Pero doon po sa mga naibigay niya mga pangalan, mukhang tumatama naman po doon sa nakuha po niyong data. Hindi lang mukhang tumatama, talagang tumama okay. ang kanyang mga sinabi. Secondly, uh, Mr. President, uh, I'd like to ask about the culpability of our customs officials. No? Kasi clearly, at nasabi ko rin po ito sa, sa media, it's either... Napaka-negligent po nila na nangyari po yung pagpasok ng droga o kasama sila dun sa pagpasok ng droga. Pero sabi ko nga rin po, mukhang may, may third possibility, which is dahil sa Tara system, pinapalampas na lang po nila yung pagpasok ng mga container at dahil sa kanilang uh, pagpasok ng mga container dahil po sa Tara, may nakalusot na droga. I would just like to solicit, ano po yung teorya po ng ating uh, uh, good gentleman po? Ano sa po sa tingin ninyo yung nangyari kaya nakapasok po yung ganong karaming droga sa ating bansa noong Mayo at noong mga nakaraang buwan pa po? Pareho po ng uh, teorya ninyo na dahil nga natakpan na ng pera yung mga mata, hindi na sila uh, nag-iisip kung droga ba o kung anumang kontrabando ang laman ng container kaya labas-pasok na lamang o tuloy-tuloy sa paglabas hindi nila iniisip na kung may drogang laman ang container, eh pwedeng yung mga kamag-anak, mga kaibigan at mga anak nila, mga kaibigan ng anak, ng mga anak ng mga kaibigan nila, ang pwedeng tamaan. Dahil nga talagang sarado na yung mga mata, sabi ko nga, kitang-kita ang kita. Opo. At yun yung nakita nila. Hindi kung ano dapat yung laman hindi, ng container. Kasi kung may kita, walang makikita. Wala nang nakita. Okay. Oh. So, in, in short, uh, Mr. President, you, you subscribe to the possibility na baka nga hindi naman talaga sila kasama dun sa pagpasok ng droga, pero dahil sa korupsyon at dahil po sa sistema po ng korupsyon sa customs, 
Kumbaga, naging complicit na rin sila dahil pinikit po nila yung kanilang mata. What do you think is the liability of the officials who may not necessarily have been part of bringing in illegal drugs pero dahil po sa kanilang corrupt system ay naging kasama na rin po sila sa ganyang sistema? Maliwanag po doon sa Section 28 in relation to Section 4 ng uh, RA 9165, yung importation. Wala pong uh, distinction na rito kung kayo ba ay accessory or accomplice. Kapag ang pinag-usapan ay illegal na droga, eh, lalo na't merong indispensable cooperation. Yung Bureau of Customs, kasi kung hindi naman sila tumanggap ng tara, eh hindi makakalusot yung limang cylinders at yung tatlo pang cylinders na nauna. At uh, God knows kung ilang pa yung mga cylinders pa o ilang pang tunilad ng droga ang nakalusot. So, I think Section 28 could very well apply okay. to those uh, customs officials na dinaanan o may kinalaman doon sa pagpaproseso ng dokumento para makalabas yung container, salo pa under uh, questionable circumstances. In short, Mr. President, they are as liable as if sila mismo yung nagpasok ng droga. Parang principal po. Ganun po, no? sa ating batas. Sa ating batas. Opo. Uh, Mario, po tayong tulungan ng mga magagaling natin, abogado, pero yun po yung aking pagkaitindi at sa pagtatanong ko na rin sa aking mga uh, staff na abogado, ganun din po ang interpretation. Definitely po, Kung lilipat man po si Commissioner File doon, hindi po siguro dapat sa isang pwesto kung saan maaari ang droga ay, ay issue or, or, or tingin niyo po dapat hindi na siya mailipat sa isa pang posisyon sa ating gobyerno. Kung halimbawa lang pong mapapakigyan tayo ng Pangulo, mas maganda po huwag nang bigyan ng ibang posisyon. Dahil sa aming mga uh, napag-alaman, sa aming pananaliksik, sa mga voluntaryong binigay ng mga informasyon, na ito na yung, hindi naman ito pwedeng basta i-disregard o baliwalain dahil mismong sa loob ng bureau, sabi ko nga kanina, top level, middle level, rank and file, meron pang broker, meron pang player na nagbigay sa amin ng information. Ito ito nga yung sinabi natin na filter natin ng maayos. Alam niyo po, masakit man sa ating dibdib dahil yung iba sa aking nabanggit ng mga pangalan, mga kaibigan ko pa po. Pero kung magiging selective din lang ako at dahil kaibigan o kakilala, eh hindi ko i-debilis ko nga ang yung kanila mga pangalan. Hindi na lang po ako mag-privilege speech. Opo. Uh, Mr. President, ano pong hinahanap natin na na mga susunod na mga hakbang dito po sa inyong privilege speech? At siguro po, I'm, I'm predicting of course the Blue Ribbon Report will also come yeah. out possibly with similar uh, similar conclusions. Kasi po, Sabi, may, meron ho kayong naipakita na kaso six years ago at parang ganyan ho yung nangyayari. May skandalo, magkakaroon ng hearing, magiging media event. Pero pagkatapos po nun, babalik na naman sa dating gawi dahil wala naman po talagang nakakasuhan o wala naman po talagang napaparusahan. Ano po yung ini-expect po ninyo dun sa, na, na mangyayari dun po sa mga officials po na binanggit po ninyo at dito po sa sistema ho na, na nilahad nyo po sa atin? One word, very important word, sustain. Kasi pagka pinabayaan natin ito at hindi natin in-exercise yung ating oversight, authority over the executive offices or agencies, then talaga mapapabayaan na naman ito. Apo. So I, I am hoping and I'm assuming that this privileged speech will be referred to the Blue Ribbon Committee. And I hope uh, I have uh, contributed some input or, or some data to the chairman para maidagdag sa kanilang uh, ma ma incorporate sa kanilang gagawing committee report or maidagdag pa kapag may mga pinatawag pang ibang mga resource persons. Uh, Mr. President, finally, punyo po po dyan ang isang santo. Palagi ko po magpapatuloy yan. No? Kung, kung di man siya kasama sa kanyang paligid, magpapatuloy po yan. Ano po yung hakbang na kailangan po natin para maitigil na itong sistema ito? At Yung perang yan, mabayad ng maayos sa gobyerno, hindi humawalan ng uh, revenue ang ating gobyerno at matigil na po yung pagpasok ng mga kontrabando sa ating bansa. Uh, sa akin pong karanasan bilang uh, namuno rin sa PNP at saka namuno rin ng mga aking mga tauhan sa mababang, mas mababang level ng command. Ang sa amin po pag-aaral at sa training, uh, ito lang po ang napaka-importante, leadership by example. No? Kasi it is second to none. There is no substitute to the to that uh, dictum, yung leadership example. Kasi kapag yung namumuno, 
eh, yung kanyang pinipreach, yung kanyang sinasabi, eh, kan hindi naman niya ginagawa o ginagawa niya yung uh, uh, laban do sa kanyang pinapatupad. Wala pong susunod sa kanya. Mm -hmm. Ang napaka-importante, ipakita niya na siya mismo bilang pinuno, ginagawa niya yung kanyang uh, pinag-uutos. Dahil pagtalikod niya, sasabihin ng mga tao niya, eh, bakit ikaw lang ba? Eh, papano naman kami? Mm -hmm. Pero kapag ang nakita lang yung pinuno nila na consistent ang ginagawa, na namumuno by good example. No? Maski yung mga kawatan doon, palagay ko kung hindi man mahiya, matatakot. Dahil alam nilang seryoso yung pinuno, alam ba, si General La Peña, and I said it uh, before, na I can vouch for his uh, personal integrity. And I just hope that he continues leading by example. Ano? I hope I'm not mistaken uh, sa pagsasabing kilala ko siya na ganong uh, kaunorabing tao at saka mataas yung kanyang integridad. And I hope na yung kanyang gagawin sa bureau, sa kanyang pamumuno, maging consistent lang. Kasi mabubulag talaga, imagine. Yun nga, yung ito, kalat naman ito sa Bureau of Customs. Ano? Sabi ko nga, four corners of the Bureau of Customs compound. Kalat na kalat naman yung pag-upo pa lamang, eh meron niyang pasalubong. Ano? At uh, hindi mo naman matatago kasi it takes two to tango. Ano? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, tumanggap ka, na ikaw lamang nakakaalam. Siyempre, alam nung nagbigay sa'yo. Siyempre. Alam noong uh, nagpabigay. At may mga dinaanan pa yon na alam din siyempre na meron nangyaring transaksyon. So, yon consistency and uh, leadership by good example. Yun lang po ang nakita kong formula. At sa atin naman panig, sa, sa Kongreso, sa Senado, eh, dapat wag nating bitiwan ito. Kasi after all, eh, magpapasa tayo ng train, ano? papasa tayo ng tax reform. Pagkatapos, ma malalaman natin na pag kinuwenta mo, imagine uh, 1,200 plus containers a day. At ito'y pag-usapan natin, MICP lamang ito at saka POM. Dalawang ports lang ito. Of course, Batangas, Cebu, may mga containers din dyan. Eh, hindi na rin hagip noong mga nakuna natin information and I would like to pursue na mangala pa rin information tungkol doon sa mga ports na yon. Dahil sigurado ko, ganun din ang kalakaran. So, wag natin bitiwan itong issue na ito at lahat tayo magtulong-tulong na manaliksik din at ating uh, sa pamamagitan ng uh, ating oversight function, pwede natin silang patawag. At pag alam na lang tayo, palagi ang nakabantay. I don't think, ano eh, kasi pag nag-slacken din tayo, babalik. Babalik eh. Yes, Mr. Ganun President. Po. Mr. President, no, medyo nakukulangan ho ng espasyo yung calculator ko dito. I'm sure na bilang nyo na rin naman Uh, meron ho ba kayong numero kung magkano po yung nawawala sa gobyerno? Roughly 40,000 ho yan times uh, 2,400 containers per week. Ang kanilang kinakatwiran, naging 40,000 na lamang yung benchmark dahil sa APTA. Mm -hmm. Pero yun nga eh, kasi pagka sinabi nating formal entry, ito yung $500 and or more. And up. And up, tapos commercial. Opo. Pag informal, ito yung 500 below 500 dollars and personal. No, pero napakalaki ng discretion no mga dinadaan na ng mga kargamento tulad lang nung uh, ito system system sistema na ito yung selectively selectivity uh, yung sa lane. Mm -hmm. Eh nalaman natin sa pagdinig ng blue ribbon nang nag-encode ay eh, mismo broker. So ang tanong natin kung ang broker alam niya may kontrabando, alam niya may shabu, ba't naman siya dadan sa red mm -hmm. na ma-x-ray siya? Tulad lang nangyari nitong sa 600 kilograms. Ano? Ito sana hindi nakalusot dahil okay. merong red flag eh. Na red flag ito sa pamamagitan ng uh, isang report at sinabing uh, nagkapareho yung dalawang shipment. Bakit parehong-pareho yung babayarang taripa? Yung o bat, ano hindi taripa? Kasi bat na lang ang sinisingil. Kung Sineryoso lamang yung red flag na yon. Siyempre, hindi dadan sa green lane yung uh, 1547 yata yung numero ng container. Idadaan yung sa uh, x-ray. O kaya may physical inspection. At pag nakita na hindi footwear, kasi ang declaration footwear, uh -huh. at nakakita ng cylinders, cylinders misdeclared na yon. So bubuksan nila yon. So hindi na makakarating sa Venezuela. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But sabi, sabi nga natin, may human intervention at yun nga, natatakpan na ng sign of pesos yung kanilang mga mata. So talagang sige-sige na. Uh, alam nyo, nung araw may mga customs commissioners na ang kanilang kondisyon. Ano? Ito yung sabihin na nating 
uh, medyo may pag-iisip. Sabi nila, maski ano, okay lang mag-uusap tayo, wag lang droga, wag lang barel. Yun na yung sa libro natin, masasabi natin, ito yung mabait na commissioner, may konsyensya, pero wala pa rin konsyensya dahil nga may tara pa rin. Oho. Pero at minimum doon, may mga bawal. Eh mukhang yung nangyari yung ngayon, wala na, wala na bawal. Na wala na ng bawal kasi nga masyadong malaki na yung tara. Masyadong duduguhin yung inyong daliri sa inyong calculator sa kakukwenta ko ilang zero yung aabutin. Uh -huh. Kami mismo ay maniwala. Alam nyo, merong isang customs official. At the outset, nung nakita namin ang pangalan, sabi ko mukhang malabo yata ito. Kaya dapat i-bet natin mabuti itong mga listahan. Kasi itong particular ng customs official, sa akin paniniwala, dahil nakapagtanong din ako sa iba, ito'y matino ito, ito'y hindi tumatanggap, ito'y matagal na sa customs, E nung nagkakaroon kami ng pagdududa, ang ginawa ko po ay tumago ko sa aking uh, ibang kakilala sa Intelligence Service and Forces. Pwede ba paki-background check mo lang ito? Kasi malaki yung pagdududa ko na baka naman masama ito sa listahan namin, e eh unfair naman. Dahil sa pagtatanong namin sa iba, e eh mukhang matino naman. Aba, e eh ang report na binigay sa amin nung, nung ISAF, no? nung mismo nagsagawa uh, nung background investigation, kumanaya sa sabong dalawang daan, tatlong daan ng parada. Merong cock farm. Pagkatapos, may mga mansions. Dalawang daang libo hanggang tatlong daang libo kada pusta. E eh, sabi ko, sama nyo na sa listahan. <laughs> Dahil, uh, papano ka makakataya naman sa sabong ng 200-300 na hindi ka naman si Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> hindi na daw nagsusugal. Ay, hindi na, hindi na daw nagsusugal po. Mr. President, uh, okay, so may listahan ho tayo. Ano pong expectation ho natin? Kasi I'm sure pati po yung taong bayan nagsasabi, marami namang accusations nangyayari sa Senado. Wala namang kaso. So who will take, who will take the cudgels for us? Ngayon po na may listahan. Kailangan pa po yung ma-verify o ma-investigate? Will it be DOJ? Will it be the Ombudsman? As, ano saan po tayo papunta dito? Well, ito, kung ebidensya ating pag-uusapan at kakailangan natin talaga yung matibay na ebidensya, kailangan pa natin ng marami siguro magtaguba na no. uh, magsasabi. Kasi may direct eh. Hindi yes. ba? Mm -hmm. Pero kung aasalaman tayo sa mga informasyon, uh, knowing it is one thing, but proving it is another. is another and the harder thing. Siguro, kung nasa so, listahan kayo, baka dapat nag-uunahan na po yan na magsabi ng totoo, baka pwede pa silang mag-apply sa witness protection program o mag-state well, witness. Sa pumamamaraan yun, kapag tayo ay nakakuha ng ganun, eh malamang talaga mabuwag natin yung, alam nyo, binanggitan na ng Pangulo ito, yung Bureau of Custom, sabi niya, rotten to the core. Eh talagang ganun na nangyayari kami. Nagulat nga rin, bakit wala na kayong makitang kapag winalis nyo, wala may iwan eh. Ganun ang uh, kung titingnan natin yung listahan. At ito'y sabi ko nga, I stand by the credibility Because various sources, binibilang namin yung sources nito, siguro hindi lang pito o walo, masigit pa. Bukod pa yung ginawa namin pagbabalidate sa independent sources na hindi na nagbahagi ng kanilang uh, listahan pero uh, sinusuga nila, sinabi nila na totoo yan. So sabi ko nga, ako ay stand by the credibility of the tariff list that we have in our possession. All right, Mr. President, marami marami salamat sa inyong oras and again I commend the good gentleman for his uh, for his privileged speech. Marami salamat. Salamat po. Thank you, Mr. President. We recognize Senator Cynthia Villar, uh, Mr. President, and then Senator Gordon. Senator uh, Villar. I just want to make a manifestation dun sa mga names na binasa mo. I remember in 2013 when we reviewed the uh, rice smuggling, dalawang names doon ang nasa listahan mo, David Tan and Manuel Santos. And then yung aming investigation in 2014 sa garlic cartel at garlic smuggling, mm -hmm. uh, nandun yung name ni Leia Cruz yes. sa listahan mo. So uh, ito ay uh, parang support na ito yung mga names na nakita na rin namin in other investigation of the Senate. And ang ikinalulungkot natin na uh, walang na-file na kaso miski isa dito sa mga tao na to. And I remember during that time, I was working with uh, Mr. Sevilla, Commissioner yeah, Sevilla of Sevilla. the Bureau of Customs. And I was talking to him and he said, uh, ano ba iiwanan mo legacy sa Bureau of Customs? Kasi ikaw naman ay bata, walang pamilya, may kaya. 
hindi mo kailangan ng pera. Ang sabi niya is before I leave, which was then one year before the end of uh, President Aquino's term, sabi niya yung national single window system. This is the fully full computerization of the customs para wala ng discretion yung mga tao doon, basta lahat ipoprocess by computerization. And I hope we will be able to uh, proceed with this kasi after talking to him on a Monday, he was re removed on a Wednesday. And uh, pagkatapos kinasuhan na yung supplier ng national single window system, mm. kaya hindi na ituloy ito hanggang ngayon. So this might be a solution, the full computerization of our customs division. And I remember because of walang nakasuhang kaso noon, kami po na mga senador in 2016, we passed a law, the large-scale agri-smuggling as economic sabotage and non-bailable. And datapos na po ang IRR niyan ngayong July. Sana po ay ma-i-apply na yan para nang sa ganun, baka naman kung makasuhan yung iba, mm. ay tumigil na sila sa kanilang mga ginagawa sa ating Bureau of Customs. Yun lang po, marami pong salamat. Salamat po. I could not but agree with the lady from Las Peñas, the distinguished lady from Las Peñas in the Republic of the Philippines. Tama po yung, yung observation. Uh, Senator Richard Gordon, Mr. President. Senator... I think he, he left the hall... Uh, Oh, he's here, uh, Mr. Okay. President. Senat Senator Gordon is here. Senator Gordon is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, and with apologies to the sponsor. Would the gentleman yield, uh, please? No, by all means, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the, uh, first of all, let me congratulate you for a very expansive and very telling expose. Of course, now uh, it has laid the predicate for us to open Pandora's box, mm -hmm. so to speak. I am happy that you delineated uh, every position that takes Tara, that's on the take. Well, now, is, now, I don't consider it a hard part, but as you say, with the help of other Tagubas, mm. and by the way, I'm not really totally sure about Taguba because he's very selective. I want to, I would like to seek your help in so far. As, uh, well, the same observation, as a matter yeah. of fact, we, we find him uh, a, a selective witness. Yes, yes, you are. Now, Your Honor, uh, the 5 million pesos that was withdrawn from the bank, that's certainly good information and uh, uh, how would we pry open that box? Literally. I think you and I know who that guy is. Uh, uh, the, the trick now is to open his own box of five million because uh, well, it has already always, been withdrawn. He can always waive his rights under the Bank Secrecy Act because after all, if, this wa if it was his account, he can actually no? He will not well, believe. That is why. That's, that's, that's why I'm suggesting if he's really uh, sincere and honest in his desire to break wide open this, this particular issue, then he should be uh, convinced to waive his uh, rights under 1405. And that's what I was trying to figure out even with the Senate President just a while ago. Uh, because we already had that information and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I know you had it and uh, we wanted to try and Pry it open, but I think we can be very imaginative in so far as that is concerned, including File Don, who I understand mm. gets 10 to 19 thousand per mm. box, including all the others. Uh, uh, let's just say now, I cannot help but observe the five to ten thousand pesos per container is actually for the office of the commissioner. I don't know the division or the app apportionment of the five thousand to ten thousand per container per day. At ang dumadaan po na containers every day nasa mga 1,200 plus containers. So, mahirap po magkwenta. Are, are you, are you, uh, is the gentleman suggesting that this is only for one section? There are 15 sections. 
There are 15 sections. There and are selected sections. I think 1, 9, 10, 15. Not all sections. That's Kaya why lahat yan merong, merong may tara. tara. May tara. That's why mababa pa ito. Baka mababa pa ito nakikita natin. That's why ako po I took the totality of the container movement in our country of 4 million and divided by, by 365 days. Mm -hmm. And then you multiply it by the tara. And uh, if you have, as I pointed out yesterday, a tara of, uh, you know, if 40,000 was allocated to the government, ang lalabas po ay kikitahin ng gobyerno ay 146 billion. Yes. And that's a lot of money already. That, that pays for the excise taxes. If it goes up to 120, which was Bert Lina's and Sevilla's mm. intention, uh, na hanggang 170 pa, so 120, we would get about 458 billion, and sa, sa 170,000, it would be 620.5 billion. Lampas na, we don't even have to increase taxes. But as you know, as we all know, the other part of the coin here is BIR. Yes. Because if customs allows it to go out, BIR should be able to track down the VAC that goes into the transfer of the products that go in uh, to the country. So uh, I notice only that BIR has not been sending a representative to the Blue Ribbon for two straight hearings already. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, I gave specific instructions to bring them over. The other question I'd like to have also, Mr. President, is the wisdom. You, uh, the gentleman is a distinguished graduate of PMA. I sometimes wonder about the wisdom of sending PMA cadets or PMA graduates to a place that is uh, a stink pot or a, a cesspool of corruption. And we can see, and you mentioned even General Ikarba. Yes. Did you, did the gentleman find it incongruous for a Marine captain, an integre, by the name of Eldon, to have under his supervision and control a two-star general who is well-respected internationally. I found it weird. Or for that matter, a colonel, Estrella. In fact, he was uh, given the, his third star during his stint uh, in Israel. the United Nations yes, in right. Israel. In the Middle East. He was defrocked after, the, uh, after his tour of duty because that was only temporary, just because to be at par with his counterpart. That's correct. And his services there was uh, requested to be, uh, to be extended. That's how snappy he was, no? I, I know, I, say. I, when I spoke with him, Your Honor, I was very impressed with him. The bearing, tall guy, and uh, seemed to be very well uh, uh, regarded. But when I saw his name in the list, I was uh, crestfallen because uh, that is, your, your whole thesis, if we don't clean up the customs, anybody you put in there will be snake bit. They will uh, imbibe of the poison of corruption. Uh, now, the wisdom of putting in military, especially a group like Magdalo, that has said at least two coup d'etats in our country, is that wise? Uh, I mean, well, I, I'd as, step back. As things turned out, I, I would say it's not wise. It's not wise, yes. It's not wise because you have a group of people, uh, classmates, if you will, and we had that situation in the immigration department, if you remember, Ms. Tayong Chair, yung head of Commissioner of Immigration and uh, the head of intelligence, they were from the same class. And now you have several of them. When you mentioned Maestro Campo, Captain Maestro Campo, and Captain Gambala. And, you know, I could not help but notice one of our colleagues here in that class also uh, was uh, exculpating them right away, but bearing down on file done. I found that weird and unusual. But I'm only saying that not to cast aspersion on our colleague here, but to say that when you have somebody like a classmate there, it is harder for you to put pressure on him, to be honest, and to, uh, when he fools around, it's harder for you to discipline him. And you have the honor code. You know, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not cheat. 
and you should not allow your fellow cadets yeah. not to lie to steal and cheat. But in this particular case, it would appear that uh, my first question to Taguba yesterday is, uh, saan ka nagsimula kung magkukurap ka ng tara? And he said, Iyas, and Iyas was under my stakampo. That is correct. Mr. And so therefore, Mr. President, uh, and he was the first to offer uh, his resignation when his name was mentioned. Courtesy resignation. Courtesy resignation. Which is not a resignation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I think we are, we're, we're both agreed that it's dangerous just to put in a bunch of people. First of all, is there any danger, for example, that they could be raising money for a political party like Magdalo? Is there any danger, for example, that they could be raising money to buy arms for another coup? I mean, the imagination can go wild and uh, with all this. So it goes into judgment of the president. So we can say that the president must be very, very careful in appointing because he has a tendency to appoint a lot of our friends in the military. Uh, and now you have General, uh, uh, whom I also consider an upright man, La Peña. Mm. And I think, I think he was appointed there not just for customs, but principally to stop the drug flow. Would you agree with that, sir? Yes, I agree with that. Uh, I think uh, he has another po twin purpose for, for that matter. Because uh, as I mentioned in my privileged speech, uh, market constriction is just one aspect of the two, two pronged strategy, it's just one side. Because if you allow free flow of drugs supply, yes. to supply, then, and I was talking to uh, PIDEA you know, uh, about this, and they noticed that in spite of seizure upon seizure of uh, uh, high quantities, no, big quantities of uh, methamphetamine, still the prices, uh, the price of meta of shabu doesn't seem to uh, go go higher. Yeah, no? it's it's, it's stable if not uh, decreasing. That's so correct. they're wondering, and the answer would be in the Bureau of Customs because they stopped. Uh, smuggling through the high seas because it's more convenient to bring in drugs through the uh, regular ports. In one ports. box, in one box, to customs. The door is open, ports. you bring in one box. And it's more right. economical because they will have only to pay, what, 40,000 for the bat, and then some, for, uh, some amount for Tara. Maybe if they uh, do it through the high seas, meaning pure smuggling, they will be paying for pay the cost Boats, cards, fishermen. Fisher, fishermen, transportation, so they found the a way. more economical uh, way of uh, importing uh, shabu. I, I agree with the gentleman again, Mr. President, because when you bring it through customs, it really is very simple. There are less moving parts and there are less people to pay. And it comes into the biggest market of them all, Manila, Metro, uh, Mega Manila. So, well, having said that, Mr. President, the other thing that concerns me, for example, is two victims of assassinations. Number one is La Chica. Uh, and there are rumors that there was a big argument the night before he was killed. I heard that too, Mr. President. And of course, Mr. Marasigan, a friend of mine. Uh, uh, Michael Marasigan is a known, and I gave a privileged speech here the other day, uh, this uh, person who was an editor of one of the respected papers in our country, uh, Business World. And he was part and parcel of uh, the uh, staff of uh, Secretary Dominguez in the expose involving one big major cigarette company that was bringing in a lot of tobacco products. Uh, would you say that there is some connection to that as well? I have no information, uh, Mr. President. But as a seasoned policeman, well, I'm not asking you Your speculation is as good as mine. So, and you're more knowledgeable. I, I, I believe you have more information. No, coming your way than I do. My information will always pay in comparison to your primary sources, Mr. President. Uh, and uh, that is not uh, to try and uh, praise you, but to try and state the fact. Uh, uh, the gentleman is very, very famous for his ability to, get, to pry out data uh, from other agencies, and I recommend him for that. And uh, I'm proud to be uh, associated with him here. Uh, but the, the, the point that I would like to bring also is that uh, major observations about uh, things that are happening there. For example, it's not just uh, military, but for example, there was a lady there that you named who was the daughter of uh, 
of another police colonel, uh, Ob uh, Obilios, mm. J. Obilios. She was in my office the other night crying and shaking and she wanted to see me. And I said, why? What, what, what are you afraid of? If you know something, tell us. She says, I'm not involved, but I'd like to talk to Senator Luxon. And I said, fine, why don't you talk to Senator Luxon? But she was assigned in the office of La Chica. Uh, was there any information in your sources to indicate that La Chica was also tainted or involved? Uh, on the other hand, uh, Mr. President, uh, the information that I got about uh, the late La Chica is that he was a straight guy. Correct. He was respected. And when he, when he died, uh, I think the wife had to borrow money, money Correct. for the uh, funeral services. Yeah. And, there were and he was living a simple life. That's correct. And uh, he left, uh, I believe, the Professional Regulatory Commission. I think the argument was about uh, no, no, no. the presence of so many uh, uh, consultants, so many consultants, so basketball many players, basketball players. Yes, that's that was correct. a big argument, and uh, uh, you know that's why, as you know, I'm, I'm very allergic to these uh, killings, and that just by the way, just as an aside, uh, the the plate number system in the motorcycles that we're proposing, I may have to extend because Malaysia, Thailand have also made bigger their car plates. Uh, recently because of a spate of incidents involving the use of bigger cars, not just motorcycles. Now, Mr. President, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, again, ask the support and help, which is always forthcoming, and I thank the gentleman uh, 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 for the oncoming investigations that are still there. Taguba, for example, makes statements, but I do know that he is holding back and that uh, we are going up, 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 and we are going to have to find out what is going on. And so, Mr. President, I would like to ask uh, the good gentlemen, and as well as the Senate as a whole, to uh, put our heads together so that we could finally end this uh, plague of this House of Corruption called Bureau of Customs. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, <coughs> Thank sir. you, uh, distinguished gentlemen from, uh, from Olongapo. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I will not move to the refer the privilege speech of Senator Larson until uh, Tuesday because uh, the minority, minority leader might uh, reserve to interpolate uh, on the subject matter. Uh, just for the record, may I just uh, place on record also first uh, my, uh, uh, my congratulations to the distinguished gentleman from Cavite, a very well-crafted, well-prepared, and well-researched speech. Now, um, uh, also for the record, because of the mention by uh, Senator Larson and Senator Gordon of the new incoming Customs Commissioner, I joined the chorus in wishing and hoping that uh, he do well. And for the record also, let me state that uh, I was, this is not hearsay, this is directly uh, to my knowledge, uh, 22 hours ago. Um, uh, Senator Hanasan and I witnessed, in fact, a, our conversation with the President, and the President said to Sid La Peña in front of us, Sid, you clean it up, he said. And then uh, he followed by, if somebody mentions my name, or the name of Sara, or the name of Paolo, kick them out. That was his direct instructions in front of the three of us. Uh, so we wish the new Customs Commissioner well, and we hope, he really, <laughs> that he cleans it up. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, may I move for a few minutes of suspension to allow the uh, um, senators to join us in the lounge, Mr. President? Session is suspended. Thank you.